Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! Whoop de doo for all those of you people who give a shit about holidays and shit. Happy Halloween! Ooh. Uh, ooh. Bah. Humbug. Hi, huge movie fanatic uh, Nate coming at you with the last of the uh, spooktacular, uh, you know, horror movie reviews for the October slash fall season of 2014. Not that horror movie reviews are going to stop. The only thing that's going to change is just this jack o' lantern that you love looking at so much is going to not be there. So, <laughs> so enjoy this jack o' lantern while it lasts, because. It ain't gonna last forever. So I'm here to review not a movie this time, but a, a Blu-ray release of a movie. This movie is, of course, 40 years old this year, and it's called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which came out in, originally in 1974, uh, co-written, produced, and directed by Toby Hooper, of course. Now, me and Matt, back when me and Matt, <sighs> ah, the good old days, used to review movies, reviewed all the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, even including the most recent one, which of course is Texas Chainsaw 3D. So if you want to see what me and me or Matt think about this particular movie, go check out our movie review of this movie. This is just a, a strictly a Blu-ray review of the very the brand new, you know, 4K transfer and DVD or Blu-ray release, well slash DVD release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now I didn't know if I was necessarily going to get this, having you know already had I think what two versions of the VHS, um, three, uh, one version of the Laserdisc, three versions of the DVD, and already one version of the Blu-ray, I was like, eh, I've bought this movie so many times, and then I was just like, screw it, I want to see what this looks like, and obviously reviews on blue-ray.com say it's the best, you know, this movie has ever looked, and it better be for releasing it yet again, and having watched it last night, I can confirm that this is in fact the best this movie has ever looked on the home video format. Um, I put the old Blu-ray in after this and just looked at a bits and pieces here and there and it was like, I swear having watched this, when you put the old Blu-ray in it looks like just a standard definition up conversion Blu-ray, which it very well could be. Um, the old Blu-ray is just pales in comparison compared to the new, you know, 4K transfer of this movie, you know, like restoration slash transfer. Um, I guess there was like a brief, supposedly there was a brief theatrical run of this new restoration slash transfer, and of course it didn't really come anywhere around me. I would have gone, but I, I don't know. It, I, it, it didn't pop up, at least that I was aware of anywhere around me, but that's okay because I really don't like going to the theater these days anymore. Corporate, you know, theater hell. So, um, <clears throat> Like I say, I can definitely confirm this is the best movie this, or the best way this movie, the best, uh, the best that this movie has ever looked um, on home video. And like I say, it blows the old Blu-ray out of the water. You can completely just see, it's like actually projecting the negative on your TV. You're just watching the negative live projected on your TV. It's incredible. You can, all the grain is intact, which of course for me is great because I'm a grain guy. I like grain, of course, this being shot on 16mm film 40 years ago, or, or 41, or however many years ago it was shot. Um, you know, it's amazing, you know, for how old it is, how great the majority of this looks. I will say that some of the dark scenes, there's shots for me that are actually um, here and there like a little darker than I think I've seen them before, which was kind of a bummer. And, and through all the, all the times of, you know, over the years of different releases of this movie, there's never been a version which has had the, like, the original mono soundtrack, which of course I'm a purist, I don't really go in for necessarily 5.1 mixes of movies that were originally mono. I mean, if I grew up with a movie, which I did with this, which I just grew up with the original mono, that's the way, really, I kind of really, I'm not interested in really experiencing it any other way. Um, <clears throat> and for so many releases of this movie on DVD, and as, as each one came out, of course, originally in the mid-90s and the late 90s, there was a stereo surround mix and stuff like that, and uh, unfortunately, you know, then there was a supposed mono track, which of course was just like a combination of the stereo track, which means anything that was in the rear you're going to lose on mono, it just doesn't happen at all, it's just like, um, 
Yeah, if you know anything about like I don't know surround tracks and can you know converting combining left right and left into a surround track right and left into mono means everything that's on the rear you don't you just don't hear at all. And so for over the years, even with the new DVD that I think came out in in two thousand, did it come out? In, I can't even remember when it came out. If there was one that came out in two thousand three, I don't know when the frick you know the the original you know that that the, the kind of special edition of this came out, the release prior to this or whatever, but um, there'd always be a, an instance in the movie where if it was with, uh, I think it was with when, what's his name, Kirk gets hammered, like this, you know, it would be a tsh and then the second hit, when he hits him on the ground again, wasn't even there at all. It's just like, oh fuck, you know, that really sucks. So there was always, like, an, as each version came out, there was always something fucked up one way or another with the sound. And I, of course, when I watched this, I picked mono, and I was very pleased to realize that the sound, for the most part, throughout the movie wasn't anything, you know, really screwed up. One thing that I will say was screwed up at the very beginning, which, of course, I think I've already read people talking about, if I, if I understand them correctly, the very beginning with the flashes of the, the grave you know, the corpse body parts is an actual visual screw-up for whatever reason, I don't know why it's there, when you, you know, the third flash or whatever, fourth flash, we click and see like a foot and then something else before it fades out, and this new version, for whatever reason, it clicks on, on the foot or whatever, cuts to the other thing, and then like cuts to black. The fade-out isn't there like it should be on all, like it is on all the other pictures of shit. And I don't understand why that's like that. So right off the bat, you kind of have what I would regard as like a fuck-up. I mean, when you're putting out a 40th anniversary 4K transfer, why is it? Why is there something fucked up the way, you know, in a way that it never has been before? And that's very, I mean, right off the bat, that disappointed me. I'm like, oh, great. Because every release, you, you, you hope that they're going to fix, you know, not have problems like they've had in the past. And it's like within the first three or four minutes is a problem. But I will say that's like, I think, pretty much the only visual problem I ever, I can remember noticing. And like I say, the original mono, which is all I listened to, I think for the most part is correct. Like all of the, you know, both of the hits on Kirk and everything else I think is is correct. And then it was the very end of the movie when Sally gets into the goddamn back of the truck. And it's like, ah, he, 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 ha, ha, ha. They do some laugh where it's like, and this happened, I think, a couple times towards the end. I can't remember where the, the audio was fucked up. It was like repeated or something. And if I can, I'll show you a, 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 a sample of how the original movie was and the, how this new version is in this one brief moment. And uh, where it's just like, ha, 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 ha. It's like they repeat it. really annoying because obviously having spent so much of my life with this movie like basically I saw this for the very first time 26 years ago um, you know it's very noticeable obviously when this laugh is completely changed and just you know it's just it's annoying and having having it happen at the very end of the movie when you thought finally there was gonna be an original audio track that was correct it's just like fuck it's almost like they do it just to like piss off the people who are paying attention or something. But, uh, and then of course there's like three commentaries, two of which we've heard before. The original, like, I think it's almost 20 years old commentary of Toby Hooper and Gunnar Hansen and Daniel Pearl from the original Laserdisc. And then you got the one with the, you know, <clears throat> cast, luckily, recorded, before, you know, with uh, Marilyn Burns, Alan Danziger, Paul Partain, and production designer Robert Burns. And uh, I don't know about Alan... Danziger, but Marilyn Burns, Paul Partain, and Robert Burns are dead now, so good thing they recorded that. That came out, I think, in with the DVD slash Blu-ray release that came out in the early to mid 
you know, first decade of the 21st century. And then, of course, we got a brand new commentary for this release with uh, Toby Hooper and the director of one of these documentaries. I can't remember which one. The Shocking Truth, maybe. Texas Chainsaw's Shocking Truth, which was recorded, I think, this year, which is first time he's done a comment, second time he's done a commentary on this since, you know, first time since almost 20 years since he did the lead laser disc. And, you know, it was kind of cool. We heard some new stuff. I can't remember the original commentary, but, you know, just to hear him and some other guy is kind of cool because when there's too many people on a commentary, it's kind of like, you know, they're competing and whatever. So, you know, I don't think there's anything... Oh, no, never mind. Um... There's something else that's exclusive to this release, which is new deleted scenes and outtakes, which are just silent shots. It's not outtakes in the sense that they're bloopers, but it's just it's just footage. It's just like footage, kind of like with the um, Prom Night Blu-ray that came out just recently, where it's just got like, I think that's got like 25 minutes of just raw, silent footage, which is kind of cool. So this has got the exact same thing in high definition, no less, which is really fascinating. Just to see just alternate takes and, and just just to see what's going on and see people popping in the screen, you know, doing the slate and all this kind of stuff. It's really fascinating. And I think it's like, I can't remember, it's 15 minutes, which went by like it was 15 seconds really watching it. It was really fascinating. And I think that's the new commentary and that are the only new things on this. I could be, you know, mistaken, but I don't know, you know. So... Is it worth the upgrade? I, I, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know. I guess so, because having, you know, saw that and then put in the old Blu-ray and skipped through scenes and this and that, it's like, oh my gosh, it almost is night and day. So this is, one thing that I will say about this movie is, like, the grain is kind of like, I don't know, hidden or whatever in the, the original, in the first Blu-ray, and this one, the grain just shines, and the colors are like in the van and stuff and in the first part of the movie where it's just you know daylight and everything like that and stuff it's just I can't obviously imagine the movie looking any better than this I mean I think 4k might even be higher resolution than 16 millimeter film I mean so I mean the scan and you know might go beyond what the resolution of the mo of the film is so uh, I guess kinda recommend it it's kinda got this cool a slip case where it's just like the you know the door entrance of the the sliding metal door and what's really cool is on the other side of this which houses the discs they just have a metal door so if you wish you can put it in slide it into the case backwards and go you know like the metal door so that's really kind of a cool design and then basically what this is, it's a four disc set, and you've got a movie Blu-ray and special features Blu-ray, and then you've got a movie DVD and special features DVD. If you open up this flap, we see Kirk and Sally, and then if you open up this, I don't want the disc to come crashing out. We got your two Blu-rays and two DVDs and then behind that is a shot of <clears throat> I'm not gonna take these four discs out but this shot of whatever her name is walking toward the low angle of her walking towards the uh, house you know the dolly shot from really low and just got a got the ass got her ass in the camera so that's my review of the the new Blu-ray release of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 40th anniversary basically Blu-ray collection and then of course there's this really kind of cool idea of course it's overly priced and I'm not gonna buy it which also a, a, a deluxe release if you will that features all this stuff in addition to I think like a conversation with William Fredkin and and uh, Toby Hooper I think is the only additional feature on that just you know of course besides just the actual packaging yourself itself which is of course a Black Mariah edition which is like this cardboard version of that classic truck, you know, that runs down the hitchhiker and, and Leatherface saws on the door package and that or whatever and you know all four discs are like a tire, each one's a tire of the Black Mariah and it comes with other shit like, I don't know, a little poster and like a apron or something like that but that's like, I don't know, $70 or something, $60 so, you know, 
for you big collectors out there, you might want to check out the Black Mariah or whatever edition of this, you know, 40th anniversary Blu-ray release. But um, I don't think, you know, this might be my last time I buy this movie. I can't imagine it getting any, like, visually better. And I guess apparently they're never going to release a version where the sound is perfect. You know, you think in, you know, today's age of just tech, you know, technological, you know, brilliance and all this bullshit, that they could release a, mo a version that's faithful to the original that I grew up with, that's just got the sound that's not fucked up. And what's ironic is when I listened to the new commentary recorded this year, that part at the very end where Sally's going, eh, hey, 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 in the background you can hear, of course, you know, very, si very quietly the soundtrack. Well, the, the laugh is correct in the commentary, in the background, and in the movie it's fucked up. How ironic's that? It's like, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. So even on this version you can see what the laugh is supposed to be like on the commentary with Toby Hooper and that other guy track. And then when you, you know, listen to any of the, I think it's screwed up on all the, you know, 7.1, 5.1 stereo and also the original mono, like, Oh, it's very disappointing. So there you are. There's my review of the 40th anniversary Texas Chainsaw Massacre Blu-ray. Um, and I guess that does it for like the spectacular horror movie reviews for this fall. Say goodbye to uh, Mr. Jack Lantern there because he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna go out. He's gonna go, go fade to black. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video.